Hey crew, I've got the key to that 22 Ford F-150 Lightning. We are going to take it for a drive, but first let's check it out. It looks on the inside and outside. We are looking at the platinum trim. And so everything above the pro models gets Ford's signature LED light bar going across the whole grill. On the platinum trim, that grill has a darkened finish to it. There are LED headlights and daytime running lights. You get your two tail hooks up front. All Lightnings get metal underbody skid protection for those batteries. This one is painted in antimatter blue, which pops in the sun with all that metallic flake. But in the shade, it looks almost black. In profile, the Platinum gets these 22 inch aerodynamic wheels wrapped in General Grabber all season tires, 275 section front and rear. You do get your running boards, but I'm kind of surprised they're not deploying running boards on the Platinum trim. Here is one of your two charging port doors, the other one on the other side. The Platinum gets as standard the normally optional 80 amp charger for level two to input 32 miles of range per hour of charging, or if you use the 150 kilowatt max DC fast charging, you can go from 15 to 80% in about 41 minutes. Body color matching door mirrors. And stepping back to look at the profile, all lightnings to start will come configured with the crew max and the five and a half foot bed. Down the road, there may be some different configurations like the rest of the F-150 lineup. Getting to the back, you see that lightning badge, which is super cool. And then to match the tail light bar going across the face, we've got LED tail lights going across the tailgate. And then down here, a little signature American flag with the lightning logo. If we drop down the tailgate to look inside the bed, you can see the Platinum gets a standard spray in bed liner. You've got your four, four cleats to tie it down. And the Platinum also gets Ford's maximum pro power onboard system. So we've got 7.2 kilowatts of power that are accessible from the bed here, including a 240 volt outlet. You can literally charge another EV with your Lightning EV. It's just wild. Exterior wise, apart from the front and back, this looks just like a standard F-150. And I think that's what truck buyers want, a truck that just happens to be an EV. Let's look at the interior, opening up and looking inside. This platinum trim is just decked out. We've got two tone leather seats. They're perforated inserts, heated for this rear bench. In uh, suede inserts here, leather with gray contrast stitching, gray open pour wood trim, a Bang & Olufsen sound system. It's still a pickup, of course, so you can lift up these rear seats and you've got this open space, or this becomes a lockable storage solution for your valuables when the other seat bottom is up and you lock it right there. Getting up and in, easy, with your grab handle. Behind my own seat at six feet tall. Look at all that leg room, so very nice. Foot pockets to slide your feet under, a kind of shorter seat shelf, so not that much thigh support. There is headroom. My head clears, importantly. We've got two cup holders back here the two stages of seat heating. You've got uh, USB ports and an AC outlet. And then this comes down, armrest with cup holders. Can't miss the panoramic glass roof as well. Yeah, very, 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 very nice rear seat area. So many berries. Let's check out the front. It is a solid door closed thud indeed. Up front, we've graduated to heated, ventilated, and massaging seats. They can also recline almost all the way back, so you can just take a nap and adjust your backrest to your body type. Power one-touch uh, windows here, and then power folding and power adjusting door mirrors. If you press this button, it will open up the front trunk, which is actually an engineering feat. This isn't as simple as, oh, we don't have an engine. They had to repackage a ton of stuff to make all of this space. You've got 14 cubic feet of space. You can put up to 400 pounds of stuff in here. And this one also, the Platinum Trim, you've got the upgraded Pro Power onboard. So you've got 2.4 kilowatts of juice accessible up here, including some USB ports. Hopping up and in, again, grab handle to make that easy. In the Platinum Trim, 
you have this 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, that's actually standard, and then a 15.5 inch touchscreen. That's an upgrade over the standard 12 inch touchscreen. That's sort of a horizontal configuration in the pro trim of the Lightning. And this system works just like the Mach-E, super intuitive. You've got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, and all the truck's most useful features remain easy to access on the screen. There is a physical volume knob if you don't want to touch it. All your climate settings remain here on the lower part of the screen. Wireless smartphone charging, two USB ports. You can stow the gear selector so that you can fold out the console cover into a work surface, or as my wife likes to say, a baby changing table. And fret not, there is still some very deep console storage. This cabin is just exquisitely well-equipped. Yes, it's $93,000, but I'm kind of being convinced it might be worth it. We're gonna have to see with a drive of the Lightning. All right, let's fire it up. And we are joined by the one and only, my wife. Christina is gonna be joining us for this drive review and she may add some layers of depth because she also got the full briefing on the F-150 Lightning. And we are gonna start out in normal drive mode with the one pedal drive activated for now and we'll also turn on the propulsion sound move back the selector that brings up a fairly high resolution camera bird's eye view and a backup with trajectory lines it is very warm right now so the ac is going to have to be on for this whole video i do apologize but not really because i need it so let's do a turning radius test Starting from here, now pointed straight. I didn't think it was going to clear this, but I want to see how close we can get. Eh, that's not bad. Not much of an adjustment need needed to fully turn back around. And we'll do a horn test in just a moment. Now, because we are in the platinum trim, we have the extended range battery situation and we make more power than the standard battery setup. We've got 580 horsepower and the same 775 pound-feet of torque as the standard range. It's cool that you can get all that torque regardless of which powertrain setup you choose. I'm anticipating the ride quality to be better than the regular F-150 because this is the first F-150 with a fully independent rear suspension. And so far, I mean like, full-size trucks can get pretty darn rough over bumps. And this, this feels pretty darn good, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Comfortable. <laughs> Absolutely, you used all your. These all your... Seats. Well, <laughs> the seats are great. Yeah, the seats are really comfy in the Platinum. Christina just finished filming a ton of her own videos for her TikTok. If you want so, to follow her, I'm checking out. The one pedal is actually one pedal too. So, like, when I lift off the throttle, if given enough time, right? Like in that interval, it didn't prime itself for regen braking quickly. But here, if I lift off. Yeah, it's interesting that it hesitates for like a full second before it actually starts to slow, but then it does absolutely slow you all the way down. Instead of it being a somewhat one pedal drive. Change up the view here. Truck info, power distribution, that looks cool. What do you think of the sound of the turn signal? A little loud. A little loud, mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not, it sounds yes. like someone knocking on a door. No, it's not terrible at all. What about the towing and 
a smart hitch. Why don't you talk about that? Oh, okay. So suit, we've got someone directing my video now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's talk well, about the towing. While well, you're stopped at a light. Yeah, well, why not? Um, usually I cut it at lights, but I'm just going to keep going. Okay. Yeah, the towing in the F-150 Lightning is pretty impressive. So the standard battery can tow up to 7,700 pounds. And if you got... What's the perfect configuration? I think they said it was like the Pro model with the extended range can tow up to 10,000 pounds. But this Platinum is limited somewhat. And the payload, the maximum payload is over 2,200 pounds. Here in the Platinum, I think it's maximum at 1,600. Wow, we got through that light, didn't we? All right, now that we're moving, back to the towing. The thing I really like about what Ford's done in the Lightning with the towing is that they use a ton of different measures for giving you the most accurate approximation of your real-time range. So they've got things like the onboard scales, which will tell you, you know, based on how much weight you have in the truck, loaded into the truck, it'll use that as one estimate for, for adjusting the, your, your total range. Then it will also, if you have the smart hitch, measure the tongue weight and say, okay, you're gonna be towing this amount, your range is probably gonna be this. And then it will also use the Ford Pass app to um, plot routes based on those range estimates and based on the knowledge that they have stored in the cloud of when this happens over time. Other F-150 Lightnings that have towed with this amount of weight, what range they're getting. So you've got all these inputs. You're not gonna have to make those mental calculations of how much range you'll actually have. The truck's gonna do it all for you. The cloud system's gonna do it all for you. Just for someone who tows a lot, that's those are valuable assets. That and the, the smart hitch that'll like literally back up to the trailer for you and the trailer backup assist that if you're not confident, you just turn the this knob in the direction you actually want to go instead of the the opposite left to go right kind of thing that comes from towing and from backing up with a with a trailer. Now back to the uh, the drive experience. This is awfully smooth. There's not a lot of that chatter that's typical for pickup trucks. And I mean, I encountered this in the new Tundra as well. Just that independent suspension means that the frame isn't as busy. And of course this is, I mean, this is some real chunkiness that we're overcoming on these roads. And though the impacts channel through the vehicle, they don't really disturb the cool and the comfort. Now let's take it out of one pedal drive and put it in sport and remind ourselves that before Lightning stood for just an electric pickup truck, Lightning within the Ford F-150 portfolio meant performance. So let's see if we can't put those two together with a test of the handling. That's just absurd, is what that is. How stable and flat it feels through a bend at speed, and the fact that you can kind of even scoot the rear end, pivot it, and drive this like a performance vehicle, it makes it fun. Well, that and even just 580 horsepower delivered instantly in a straight line. That's fun, too. Oh, my gosh. It's not just the power that helps it go so well, so quickly. It's also the fact that this is the most aerodynamic F-150 they've ever made. So, yes, it still very much looks like a pickup truck, but the minute changes they did to the exterior to help it cut through the air better, one, make it quieter at these speeds than I really anticipated. And they do have a little bit of an acoustic laminate on the glass and the platinum.
but it, it just it really does slice through that air like very few pickup trucks can and it hauls it absolutely freaking hauls I like the propulsion sound too extra entertainment Now, I'm personally not shocked at how well the F-150 Lightning maneuvers because I did get a ride along in this vehicle and they took it through a autocross course, which pickup truck and autocross course never are used in the same sense. Occasionally pickup truck and drag strip are used in the same sense, but autocross course, no. Now that we've got this much weight down low, They can share a platform when talking about fun. And Christina, who gets motion sick? I'm sure you're not having as much fun. But isn't it impressive? Like what this truck can do? Oh yeah. There's no doubt about that. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I guess it's impressive. <laughs> it is. I'm just trying to keep it together. Okay. Well, okay. So I need to I need to now frame some of this. But before I do that, I want to get on one of the approved highways where I can use the Blue Cruise system. The hands-free driving system. Just to see how it works. All right, we are ready for Blue Cruise. It says hands-free here, and that means I can take my hands off. And we have navigation going, so it should follow at this interchange it should follow the left pattern left path instead of the right one we'll find out for now it's doing a great job of slowing to keep the following distance from the vehicle in front of me and will it take the left path no it tried to take the right one all right, so even with navigation going, it may not want to, may not know which way you want to go with it. So clearly you still have to pay attention. And I mean, even if this system was flawless in the way it followed the route forward, I would say you still need to pay attention because these systems, whether it's Ford, Tesla, whatever, can fail and are meant to be watched over meant to have some oversight and Christina I don't know would you use a system like this I would for a time on a long road trip but as you're saying I don't I, I trust the system I don't know if I trust people we're easily distracted we are we are so I guess how loud is the alert to put your hands back on them? well you just heard it like that's kind of the first was that the alert to put them back or was that, that was the alert, like you're going the wrong way like no that was to put your that was to put your hands okay. back on the wheel right because it was like uh, I can't handle this Put your hands back on. I need some guidance. Okay. So that was that was the sound of the alert, and ultimately, I think like if you are using it as you should be, which is eyes forward, right? Like you can have your hands down, maybe grabbing a snack or something, but watching the road, like that prompt is going to be enough for you to okay, got to put my hands back on the wheel. And I think I think this kind of system can work really well, as you said, on a road trip. I'm imagining like you towing something uh, with a full family in the car and you're using Blue Cruise, like that can really alleviate the stress and and just the wear and tear on you from a longer trip like that. I'm, I'm excited for the future of these systems. And like you said, you always need to be vigilant however you're doing it. Yeah, and it's not an excuse to pull out your phone and text. No. No. Absolutely not. Agreed. So we've seen the F-150 Lightning handle and cruise but let's see it sprint to 60. We're in sports, prime it and let it go. A little tire squeal. And that's 60 in 4.4 seconds. On this very non-perfect road surface, we just beat Ford's own estimate of four and a half seconds for the zero to 60 of this extended range version of the Lightning with a little bit of tire squeal. 
That's incredible. What did you think about that? Huh? What did you think? It was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> I agree. It was awesome. I mean, I'm impressed that we beat the time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, what? What were you saying? I forgot what I was saying. This truck's fun to drive. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, should we talk about competition? All right, so I'm going to keep the competitive discussion for the F-150 Lightning pretty brief because, one, there aren't a ton of competitors, and two, I've only driven the R1T. I've not driven the Hummer EV, so I can't really discuss how that one drives in comparison but starting figure for the f-150 lightning if you're just going to grab the pro in the standard range is just over forty-one thousand dollars. neither the r1t or the hummer ev will get anywhere close to that and i'm including the future models that they're planning to launch the cheapest rivian r1t is going to be about sixty seven thousand dollars in 2024 and the cheapest hummer ev is going to be about eighty thousand dollars in 2024. So the F-150 Lightning is going to have the market cornered on a full-size electric pickup truck in the $40,000 range. So that, that's just kind of crazy. This one is tested, I already said, is about $93,000. The Platinum trim is ninety two dollars to start. The XLT, which is going to be a pretty big hit, I imagine, is about $54,000, and then if you want the extended range setup, you're looking at $74,000. And that is a chunk of change. But with that extended range, you're also getting a lot more features in the XLT. And I think that, you know, factor in the $7,500 federal tax credit, factor in the performance, factor in the pro power onboard system where you can just power like anything. Um, you can factor in with the extended range the backup power, backup assist, no, not backup assist. What do they call it? The intelligent backup power? Intelligent backup power where you can run your house for three days at full power or run it for 10 days if you're kind of rationing that power. There's so many features. This is a significant, incredibly significant model, not just for Ford, but for the entire automotive industry. And I understand now why Ford has 200,000 pre-orders made. Now granted, it's only $100 to put your name down for one of these trucks, but 80% of those buyers have never had an EV and a big chunk of them have never even had a pickup truck. And I think the appeal is just because this vehicle checks so many boxes. The size means you can live out of it as your single vehicle and the performance, even the, the standard battery makes 452 horsepower. Like you're not hurting for performance and 230 miles of range is gonna be enough for just about everyone. And if you're using it in a mild use case, just plugging it in, you know, overnight and, and even using the systems that you have on hand to charge up when it's off peak grid times, like, I mean, I get it. Like I 100% I am sold on this product. I mean, I have like only one caveat to to fully recommending this F-150 Lightning to a lot of people, like a giant portion of the car driving public. And that is just that if you are thinking about it as your only vehicle, road trips, road trips are gonna be questionable because without that Tesla supercharger network of stations, the unpredictability of charging infrastructure and reliability of charging is ever present and until we get there which is probably going to happen in the next five years until we get there it's just it always is a little bit of a question mark and that's kind of it though because ford has a huge home run on their hands and i imagine that it's going to take them quite a while to wade through all of the orders to get the number of trucks needed for all of the interest produced I hope you guys have enjoyed this PUV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And I'll see you next time. Whee!